So what we did was run a lot of inside zone, a lot of motion. Um, we were we relied on getting the ball in space, but we had to keep the score low because we were not a scoring machine. Um, we played Christian Collegiate and a great coach. He just passed away from cancer, Joe Roberts, down in Gulfport, Mississippi. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. But um, he, uh, we played a game, and it was the lowest eight-man scoring game I've ever seen. It was 10 to 6, and we won by um, scoring a touchdown, I believe, in the third quarter and then getting a safety in the, in the first half, um, which I've never seen that low of a game um, before. So is there uh, – before I go to the huddle clips, is there anything that y'all need – want to talk about or any questions about so far? Uh, anything any, – anything that y'all would like to talk about? If anybody wants to come on and ask a question, just throw your camera on and, and go ahead and ask it before Coach yeah. goes through the clips. Coach uh, Wolf Graham, you're uh, muted. There you go. Uh, you got a lot of empty stuff there, empty quads, empty scripts, <laughs> whatever. How do you pass protect out of that? Pass protect. So um, at the very beginning, we did the old uh, turn back blocking, and the receiver and the quarterback knew that there's going to be a free guy coming after him. Okay. And um, it's hard to pass protect an eight man. Um, but this last year, what we decided to do was kind of the drop back step. And that worked a little bit better. I think that works better in eight man, especially if you have bigger guys. Um, we had some bigger guys so we could get back and kind of protect. Um, but that quarterback has to know that there's going to be somebody free. And he has to recognize him pretty quickly or he's going to get his head knocked off. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wish I had a better answer, but. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? Anybody else out there want to get a question in before Coach goes through his clips? Looks like we're good, Coach. Go ahead. Okay. Um, can y'all see that, that that up there? I got nothing yet. Okay. Let me uh, share. There we go. There we go. Okay. Let me. All right. So, um, like I said before, Coach uh, Wolf Graham, one, and I just thought of something. Once you open up that, um, you see that you're going to be dangerous and that empty. And, oh, let me go back. Okay. Once you see that, uh, once the defenses see that, you can spread it out and be effective about it. They're going to be less likely to bring five people. They might still bring four, um, but they're going to bring at least four. But you can protect that, especially with the quarterback knowing where that person is. Um, so this is a first first scrimmage of the year for our for us. Um, a lot of mistakes here, but this was our trips left open. This was a good formation. Um, and I'll just play it, and then we can walk through at the end. This is going to be that outside zone caught Colt. And that tight end didn't do a great block, but like I said, that's Preston that I told you earlier. Um, very good athlete. Um, what I teach on offensive line that we didn't really do well at all right here, but this guy should be – he chipped and then should go get him. Everybody's first man knows to play side. That's one thing I did carry over from um, 11 man is when we run inside zone, it's first man knows to play side. And that's who you get. We're looking for double teams. There's no backers. There's this overhang guy. So we're just going to go man up. And that's what we should have done here. But like I said, first game, first scrimmage. Um, didn't, do too, didn't do too hot right here. But Preston makes something work, and that's what about eight man is. If you have athletes, you're going to be dangerous. Okay, same thing here. 
um, this is what I was showing you about. This is the four. I don't know about up north what most guys get on defense, but this is the most of the time what you get. Um, this is a team out of Little Rock that we were scrimmaging. They weren't the best team, but they were a team that um, that was willing to come play us and give us a good look. So I'll play it for you. This was our speed option. I love the speed option. They wanted to bump. We click it out again. A lot of mistakes happen in this game. And that was the kid that got hurt uh, in the first game. Uh, Zane, he broke his foot. Okay. Oh, they didn't do a good job filming this one. Okay. So they, well, this is our twin set. We're still in pistol here before we switch to our shotgun. Um, we motion, a lot of motion, like I said. Um, a lot of teams will, if you motion, they're going to blitz from where the motion came from. So uh, that's what we saw anyway. But um, this is, again, a lot of mistakes. I thought I took this one out. Preston makes that work. It ain't even worth watching. All right. So this is, uh, again, we, after, after the scrimmage, is when we went to the shotgun. You see a lot of offset stuff. Um, you see the outside receiver here. He's the outside guy. If I call Z loop, he knows he has to be off the line. Um, and that's something the receivers have to realize and work with. So what we do, we uh, run that Z loop. They're going to chase over. Defensive ends crash. And that uh, was our lone senior this year, Trey. And that was during a jamboree that we ran, uh, played that. And it just – those defensive ends just crash up the field and zone worked really well for us there. Okay. Probably our biggest uh, hitter for Trey this year was called Tennessee and Titan. And all that was is a trap, um, a trap play. And you'll see that here. Um, we had a big tackle. Tyler Hardy ended up moving to a bigger school in Arkansas, uh, 5A or 6A. but. Um, he worked well for us this year. This was our second game, and after all the injuries, it kind of hurt us. But Trey made some stuff work. Let me – all that is is a block down, block down, block down, and then a kick out. Let's see, right there. And, of course, Reed, uh, that, the tackle that kind of fell, he didn't really – do a great job there, but it is what it is. It made it work, let up, and Trey did some good things with that run. Again, if you have a wide field, again, these spread, these splits got better throughout the year, but he should this guy should have been out here or should have been at least on the number. Again, this is a twins tight. This would be right twins tight, tied in right here. And we just like to run this. He saw the hole. Didn't do a great job of protecting it. Um, this was the biggest offensive line that I had in eight man. And it was tough to get them to care sometimes. But um, Okay, so – this is a clip after Preston did get hurt. We had to end up running a lot of triple option type stuff, and that's what I call Georgia and Tech. Everything I'd give a name to so the kids will be familiar with it and be easier to put in. So a little triple option stuff. Um, it didn't work for us very well. Should have realized this before. Um, but Daniel Strange did a good job in stepping up for us there. And this is what we should have been doing all along. We probably would have won this game if I wouldn't have been such a moron and just running the ball, spreading it out and running the ball. Um, that's what I should have done. Of course, receiver didn't block that guy right there, and he's the one that makes the tackle. Um, what we, we try to teach uh, this receiver right here, he needs to go up and stalk him. And should be staying on, staying on, staying on, and then it lets him go. And of course, he gets the tackle. But again, that's just Bronco, so it's first man knows to play side. 
We're leaving the backside guy untouched. And they just do enough. We did a good, get a good gain right there. And that worked well for us. Okay. Again, motions were big for us. Offense lineman didn't get out of the way, but Trey made it work. Just a simple zone, fake the zone, the jet sweep, and the zone back underneath it. This is the same type of play. Cameraman was real shaky here. Let me fast forward it. Um, this team adjusted their field back to a true eight-man field. Um, a court, well, I say true eight-man field. It was a 40, um, 40 yards wide not necessarily 80 yards deep. Got away with a holding call there, but okay. This was the junior high team I was telling you about. Um, not a whole lot of big guys. Well, it's JV. And Charlie Harvey um, did a great job. Of course, get in space. If I could tell you one thing today, Get your kids in space and let them work. Um, that's the best way to be successful. When you have guy, when you're going to be down a guy on defense, so you can't really run zone coverages. You're going to have to run man. So you see this guy spying. So we make a miss. I think it's a lot. We make it a lot harder as coaches sometimes. I think he stepped out right there, but make it a lot harder um, than it needs to be sometimes. Again, we see a four, a five-man box. We're probably going to run. I mean, we had a tough time blocking these guys. We just had to do enough to get on them. Cooper, 70, didn't really know what to do. And get in space, get in space, get in space. Okay, uh, back, that was uh, – I should – man. Okay, so this was the – real quick about this game. This game was 80-66. to 66. Um, Of course, you see the team that we were playing there. They scored 30 points, I believe, off of kickoff returns. Um, it was – we just couldn't stop them on the kickoff return. We kicked it out of bounds a couple of times. Then they started taking the penalty, and then we kick it to the – Right side of the field, they return it. Left side of the field, return it. Fortunately, we got away with uh, we got away with that one and was able to score when we needed to. So um, again, this was there, and all that was is our trap play. It just uh, the thing that Reed didn't do well there, and he's the guy pulling. He should have been working right here, right off of that guy. But, of course, he stays there. But Trey makes it work. Of course, Trey, that this game had 10 touchdowns. We had to put him at quarterback um, because Preston was still hurt. And he threw five and ran for five. Um, and if you have a question, I can't see uh, if you all have questions, so just – Holler if you do. Oh, okay. Same game. We I think this is the one we do without a uh, – Tyler does a terrible job there. Um, again, they this was the third game we had played. He has to get – he needs to get down the line of scrimmage and then kick out. Of course, he scoops. But when you have good athletes, Trey was a good athlete. He wasn't the fastest. He wasn't the big. He wasn't the biggest, but he was very strong. Um, and he worked well with it. He worked. We got him in space, and that's what we had to do as a coaching staff. So um, we were already down in this game, and you see this team. They're trying to run a cover three scheme. And um, on 11 man field, it's hard to do, and this is why. I see that Daniel, backup quarterback, 
we're just going to throw the ball. Just run verticals. And the way – and let me see if they – I think we ran it right. Yeah. So the back stays in unless he's tagged to go out. And that helps uh, – I know Coach uh, asked a question about pass protection. It helps if he stays in on twins – or any, or just anything he's inside to the uh, inside the formation stays in and help unless I tag him on a swing. Of course, you see that Ty does a good job getting the ball there, and Daniel does a good throw. Okay, um, if you go back to those pass formations, this is what I call shark, and all it is is a slant and go with a wheel. Of course, Preston's back at this game, so we can throw the ball a little bit more effective. And you see, Coach, uh, you asked earlier, they uh, they try to blitz a little bit here, but he knows it. Preston knows it. And that wasn't really ran great. This should have been all the way out here, and this should have been through the middle hash. but does a good job there. And that's just what our, we like to do. Um, I'm getting to those solid screens I was telling you about. Um, this was our smash concept. And like I said earlier, it's uh, – this is a good, good job. Again, Trey didn't really run the post right, but he was open. And, again – Okay, so this is the solid screen I was telling you about. It is the best play that we had in. This is out of empty. And watch this guy down here. This is how you run it. Of course, our center didn't do a great job. We have athletes. What, what we teach on this for the linemen is let them go. Let them go. And everybody goes to the next level. Go to the backer. If you the, – the, the backside tackle or guard and the center would go double-team the backer. Or if the backer's blitzing, you go to the next most dangerous guy. Bo right here lets up a little bit and looks back and that almost messes up this play. But thankfully, Daniel does a good job. I'm telling you, put this play in. I don't, if you're a run-based team, pass-based team, whatever, whatever you do, this is a great play to put in. I'm telling you. Okay. Now, same kind of deal on the solid screen. Same kind of deal. We just add a motion into this one. He should have faked the jet right there. Held on it a little bit too long. You probably saw that there. Let me uh he should have snapped it right there. Back pedal, back pedal, back pedal, throw the ball right now. And if he does, and instead, again, this guy, if you know him, you know why. But he should have thrown the ball a little bit earlier. Does a good job. Okay. Um, this is what I was telling you about the um, RP. It's not really RPO. It's a, three, it's a third level read. It's an inside zone read with a bubble. So we're reading – this end right here, and we're reading this guy, and we'll see what happens. So, he, in reality, he should have gave that first read. Runs that bubble. Again, no blocking. Let your athletes be athletes. Get in space. Okay. Now, this next stuff is going to be all past stuff. Going back to our junior high group. Again, you see how wide their splits are? If we were a downhill running team, 
we would have ran all day, but we weren't. And Charlie sees it, sees it. This is a flood, and we ran flood probably ton, 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 ton of times. Right there. Again, we run flood again. We see the guy that was on our uh, Z receiver. And we just, like I said before, we found the mismatch. We tell the offensive lineman here, he should have been coming out here. They should have all been coming out here, and this guy should have opened up looking back this way. But Chase didn't do that. But luckily, we found the mismatch and got to it before we could do anything. Okay, like I said, we didn't run this formation a whole lot, but this was an I formation. Um, we're going to play action, flood pattern. Just get out there. And this is the same play that you just saw. I, I just want to brag on Charlie right here as a quarterback. This was probably one of the prettiest balls that I saw all year in high school, junior high, um, anywhere. Our splits aren't great here. This was the very first junior high game of the season. It was 56-42 to 42 against a team that uh, Lee Academy has not beaten in – I don't know when the last time they beat them in junior high, honestly. They didn't. They said they hadn't beat them in a while. But our splits aren't great. Let me just show – I want to brag on Charlie. Good cut. Just a very pretty ball. Perfect ball. And Jack does a good job of getting a little bit of separation. Okay, again with Charlie, what I did is gave him a little leeway. When I saw he could handle um, some responsibility, most – I know some of the coaches I've coached with and some of the coaches I played for, what he's doing right here, we're running flood again. And it's probably going to be open. But he told Tanner, run a run a slant or post right here. Run a run a little inside route. And he because he saw this defender that was on him. He saw this defender. He was kind of overplaying him. And it could have been intercepted right there. But I gave those kids responsibilities and I gave them freedom to do that kind of thing, but it made them more enjoyable to play and enjoyable to coach because they wanted to do more. Um, again, this is that Potter Kiwi, Charlie, and these receivers right here did a great job with it. And I'll show you why. This is DeSoto and they wanted to run a little cover three type action. Charlie does a good job of reading that first guy. He crashes with him. Does a good job right there. This is our drive play. Um, Cameraman didn't start, start a little late. Again, offensive lineman should have been back here. We got away with the lineman downfield against this because the center blocked the backer, but they didn't call. And this was actually in the district championship game. And you see what we do to these guys is just formation them. This is our double stack, hard to cover um, for them. Charlie sees it late, but he does throw it. And I'm just showing y'all some clips. Okay, this was a mismatch we've been seeing a lot. Um, corner was a weak corner on one of our – not our best receiver. He's the seventh grader right here, this guy. 
and we just throw it. And again, yes, the protection's not all the way there, but once you can expose some of the things, they're going to have to put somebody else back there. If they would have had a safety here, or at least here, could have been a different story. But again, Charlie did a good job. He felt pressure through the ball. And that's all we asked him to do is one, two, catch the ball. Um, back to the solid screen. I know this is a little jumbled up, and I'm sorry about that. I thought I'd organize these. Um, the thing you want to teach your receiver to do on this, he comes up. Comes up. He should have sold one more step, but it worked for us. This was a perfect – well, dang, I almost said perfect. And y'all, I think y'all saw what I saw. The, the big tackle guy should have taken him out, but ran right by him. But Daniel does a good job in finding that seam. You got to be able to find the seam. Okay. This was one of the plays I was telling you about Preston at the very beginning. He didn't really uh, – he forgot where to, where to go. He's supposed to be at tight end, supposed to be at wing. Okay, he settles in. And all night, I told you about Trey, senior leader, second and short. Most people are going to run inside zone or something right there. So what we do – he rises up and just throws it over. Find the gaps and use them right there. And my last clip right for today um, is the two-point play that we ran really – this was the best-looking clip I could find. There's some other. We want a motion away from it just to get some mo movement going. He should have snapped it a lot earlier. Okay, sorry, this camera angle. Okay, what he – he didn't sell it great there, but what's supposed to happen – and then turtle back out. So what – does a good job there. You got to tell him throw it close to the sideline or throw it to the sideline and then basket catch it right there. Okay. And we're back to the beginning. Let's see. Okay. Um, that's all that I have uh, for today. Um, if, you, if there's any questions, um, if you have uh, questions or need, want to call me or anything like that, uh, my cell phone number, 318-560-4231. Um, and you can Twitter message me, you can email me, whatever you may need. Uh, feel free to – I'm wide open on on plays or, I mean, formations. I can email you my stuff. Just let me know. I'm, I'm Feel free to – I'm here just here to help, anything like that. Is there – anybody before have a question? We, before we go to questions, can you throw that slide back up again with your contact yeah. info? I, uh, when I was moving my computer there, I double clicked the uh, record button, so I stopped it at the beginning. So, okay. wouldn't mind throwing okay. that back up there, it'd be awesome. I'm trying, let's see if I can go to Zoom. There you go. Uh, awesome. And then, do you mind just moving through those slides again? You don't have to talk about them again, but just moving through yep. them so we, we've got them there as a reference. Yeah, there's, a, there's my biography. Coach, that, that Falcon Z twirl, that was uh, the one where it's – it's slant out on one side, and then the, the backside guy's running that twirl route, like a fake slant. Yeah, so we ran it out of empty, which I just our two-by-two. Two, and we would motion the Y receiver, which is our slot guy, across the formation, um, and then run our slant out on the one side. And, of course, fake like we're running a slant, and then head to that sideline. That was our best, uh, best two-point play. It worked 
um, I'd say probably 75 to 80 percent of the time um, because you could get a lot of especially when you have that open space where a receiver just vacated a a slant is a common a thing that oh man that's about to happen well if you can make him overcommit with a heavy step and get back out and um, it's wide open I mean it, it was one of the biggest things that we saw at Riverdale and at Lee that worked really well for us I like that yeah and that's how I call plays. I mean, it's – I know a lot of the old school football guys, and I was one of those that want to run the number holes that um, – but I just not – the kids really seem to grasp on to the mascots and the cities. I mean, I don't know what it is about it. Um, just something I said, hey, why don't we try this? And it worked. And it worked for us, what we like to do. Those are pretty much all the past concepts we used. We didn't really go outside of those. And really, probably five of them, maybe six is what we, we stayed with pretty much all year. If you can get that center out on Nash to block the backer, that's pretty effective. Yeah, that was our <laughs> best. I, we, I, his name was Lake, and we, I don't know why they didn't call it, but it worked out for us. Got away with one there. Yeah. And that's our concept rules is co- cover the same area of the field no matter where you are in the formation. If in two by two you're supposed to go run an out, well, if you go to trips, you're on the other side, now we're in a drag. Or if we're supposed to run a corner in smash where well, you're in trips, now run a post. Um, and the kids seem to grasp onto that as well. A lot of people make fun of me for using Harry and Potter, but the kids got it. They came up with it, and I let them kind of have ownership of it. Um, and I think if you let them have ownership of what they call stuff, they remember it a lot better. Oh, okay. And I didn't – and I and Solid Sucker, I, lost, I don't know where that thing was, but all it is is that solid screen – and the the inside the outside slot receiver stalks the his, the Z guy, and then releases out. And it's usually wide open because we ran that solid screen a ton, and it it worked really well for us um, once we did get that sucker going because we sucked him into the play, and it was a wide open wheel. Those are our motions. A lot of good stuff. I mean, I would just get those, get a couple formations, get those formations, move people around, and it just drives defender, defensive coordinators insane. I mean, it just will, it really will. I know it did my defense coordinators during um, scout team and all that kind of stuff. And that, and that's kind of so. I didn't know how to draw on here. I've never really done that, so I just took pictures of the sheet I had. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. And this is kind of our base. This is what we start with and pretty much we lean on, but we'll go into those other the other ones. Um, I tell you, having a wing guy, especially if you're a spread guy, just have putting a wing down causes some fits for some defensive people. I mean – I didn't think it would, and then I started experimenting with it this year, and it worked really well, especially if you want to pull that guy. It worked pretty well for us. Just putting a trips with a wing back or twins with a wing back worked pretty good. Awesome, Coach. I would have called that last one Carolina, but that's just me. Yeah, that's – I can't, I don't know how I, why I came up with that, but I did. But. All right, fellas, if you want to uh, jump on and, and get some questions for Coach before we uh, close this thing down, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I got one. It looked like uh, you had different size fields there. Is there no set size field? For yeah, Coach, Coach Lofton wasn't here. We've asked for that for years, for the two years I was in the association – they don't mandate what size your field can be. It can be a 100-yard field. It can be a wide field. It can be a short field. Mm-hmm. They just kind of let you do what you do. 
So some coaches, if we know that we're playing a really fast or physical team, um, we'll, we'll tighten the field down. And there's no rules against it. So it's kind of gamesmanship at that point. Um, it kind of played to our advantage on that. But I wish they would. I wish they'd just go ahead and say, um, we're going to do a, a regular eight-man field. The thing is that where the state championships are played or is on a turf 11-man field, and they don't want to do what – doubt the tech in Texas for six-man, they just put nylon lines down on the field. But I guess they were too good to do what the Cowboy Stadium does. So, so even, even your own home field you can change week after week? Mm-hmm. <laughs> at, the, at the beginning of the year, we did 11-man field. And then as we saw we had injuries, we felt it was better for us on defense to tighten it down. Um, because awesome. because the, the thing is that where those numbers are on 11-man field is where a lot of the touchdowns are scored. So Do you have to let the other team know by a certain point in the week what size? or is it I did, but I have done it where they've done it to me where they didn't have to. Right. We showed up and it's a eight, a eight man. It's a regular eleven man field or a regular eight man field. You guys are lucky that Winslow is not an eight man because Savisky would have something different going on every single week, man. He'd be screwing with you guys so bad. Yeah. <laughs> ah, we got guidelines here. <laughs> yes, I wish we did, but of course, I mean they kind of look down on eight man as a little little brother, but they're going to have more eleven man t- eight man teams than they are eleven man in the association by the next probably two years. Wow. Cool. Other questions for Coach? Uh, I've got a couple for you. First off, where in Arkansas are you, Coach? Well, I was in Mariana, Arkansas, and that's uh, pretty much halfway between Little Rock and Memphis. Nice. That's where my my younger sister lives in uh, Little Rock. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice area. I've, uh, I'm dying to come out there and get some barbecue. Yeah, go over to Memphis. Memphis is been to Memphis. Barbecue. I've been to Memphis. Yes, sir. The barbecue in Memphis, go to Central Barbecue. I, I mean, I could list off. If you, Rendezvous? You, I'm a big guy. I know where the food spots are. <laughs> Rendezvous? Yeah. yeah, Rendezvous is really good. Absolutely. Um, um, my question pertaining to eight-man football. Okay. Because you talked about a, uh, a game that you had 80 to 66. Yeah. Is that indicative of eight-man football, or do you, do you see the defensive 7-6, 13-12 battles as well? Um, the Two years ago, I was at Riverdale Academy in Louisiana, and we had a 10-6 game. Um, I think – and that was actually on a true eight-man field. I think it goes back to having that, that field size. If you can score a lot of points, especially if you have an 11-man field. I mean, you just have an athlete get on the edge, they're gone. I mean, they're, it's hard to catch them. Right. But um, with that particular game, it was the kickoff and kick returns. Um, we did onside kick right, onside kick left. We pooched it. We did everything we could, and they would just return it. It was a lot of, uh, a lot of fast guys, and they would, they're just faster than us. And we'd get on and score in three plays and then kick it off again. And then I tried to kick it out of bounds a couple times, and then they, they finally got smart enough to take the penalty and make me re-kick it. That game was three and a half hours long. It's a long game. Yeah. Other questions, folks? Yeah, hey, Jared, I thought yeah. you made a really good point with the uh, two-point play. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did have a team try to kick an extra point this year, a holdiness, uh, and it didn't work. But the uh, idea of packaging two-point or goal line plays, I thought was a very good point. Um, because again, you're not kicking and um, having that ability a, a package of plays that you can go to, I thought was a nice point. We practiced uh, two point plays every uh, pre- two, two or three times a week. We would have a session of just those five or four two point plays and we'd rep it, rep it, rep it, um, just so we would know we could be perfect when we need those two point plays. We, did have a that, we had a senior that wanted to kick a field goal in his last game, and like you said, it didn't work. We couldn't block it. So, 
like I said, if there's any anything you that comes to mind, uh, just holler, get my information, and call me, text me, email me. I'll be feel free to. I'm a wide open book. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Coach. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Very good, Jared. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. For coming in. We're, we're gonna have an eight man roundtable at the end of the month. I may try to try to hook back up with you and get you in on that. Oh, for sure. I'd be very interested in that. All right, man. Awesome. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good weekend. We're off for the weekend. I'll see some of you guys on Monday. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thank uh, you. Peace out, fellas. Thanks, Coach Athelay. Thanks, guys. See you.